Um, I'm joined by Sam Hunter and Giles Elwood from the Mighty Home Search. Guys, it's nice to see you and speak to you. Um, the other day in the office, we read the news that Home Search had, had raised not an insignificant amount of money. And so we did what we do here at Kerfuffle and we ran around the office high-fiving each other. And then we stopped and went, hang, hang on, this is great news, but what does it actually mean? So what does it mean for Home Search? What does it mean for the agents that use Home Search? And what does it mean for Mr. and Mrs. Vendor that are going to be using a Home Search agent? Tell us all about it. Good question, um, Sam. You're, you know, if you want to, if you want to give the structured, organised answer, you far away, or or we can have the kind of more casual Giles answer. But go on, Sam. You you start this one. I look forward to the more casual Giles answer. Uh, David, thank you for putting me first in that preamble as well. Um, hopefully some of our more casual chat before we hit record does make it to air at some point. Um, it is a really good question. How are we going to spend uh, what is not an insignificant amount of money uh, over the next you know, 12 to 18 months? Um, we actually asked uh, our customers how we should spend it, but we did in a way where we didn't tell them what we were really asking them. So uh, we may have announced the funding last week, middle of Jan 2022, um, but we actually closed the, the round um, at the end of November. Um, it's actually literally on the day that I flew out to see my family for the first time in three years, sitting at an airport at Heathrow and got an email saying we're all done and dusted. And that was uh, much better than the like following 24 hours on a plane with a one-year-old. Um, <laughs> what we did when we sort of had a, a pretty fair indication that everything was going the way that uh, we believed that it would. Uh, we conducted a really robust annual survey of our entire customer base. Uh, um, not everyone answered, obviously, um, but we had we were fortunate enough to have uh, a number of, of people come back. I think it was something like 38% of our user base responded, which is really good for a, a survey. Um, it highlighted some pretty obvious challenges in the marketplace around stock levels, uh, fees, um, and how people can actually increase their fees, not just hold them, which actually that was the most encouraging thing out of like, it took just under six minutes to complete that survey, which is a long time to do a form. Uh, and the coolest thing that came out of that was people who were looking to actually increase their fees rather than just compete against somebody offering half percent. Mm -hmm. And then the third one was uh, actually people were pretty happy with the volume of inquiry they were receiving into their business but they were only converting in some instances like 20% of their vows yeah. because people were just, were just sitting on their hands. They weren't missing it to other people. They were just saying, we kind of want to know what a house is worth because maybe we're going to find something we like and we'll cash in and we'll move, but we haven't yet. So we're just going to kind of chill out. Thanks very much. Uh, so we took those results and we sat down uh, as a group ourselves. We actually ran through every single answer with our entire commercial team and our development team what Giles did, I wasn't there. Uh, I was literally sitting on a beach in quarantine. Uh, so I'm not sure who had more fun that day, actually. Um, and we said, right, these are the problems. What can we build to solve them? Um, and fortunately, usually we ask those questions and we say, what can we build on a fairly shoestring budget to solve them? Now we said, right, if we've got a reasonable arsenal at our disposal that we don't want to waste, but we do want to spend in the right way, what can we do? So uh, we actually... Uh, came up with and um, with the benefit of a few uh, good agents who are sort of in our camp as well who actually participated in the fundraising process and gave some interviews and testimonials to Octopus uh, three quite major releases that will come out this year one of which has been worked on like through Christmas uh, over the holidays and will hopefully come out in the next few weeks um, that will actually try and solve that conversion problem to start with Fees is an interesting one. I don't think technology can solve fees in itself. Um, and then, you know, everyone's main answer of how do I get more gigs? Um, fundamentally, that's how we've grown this business. You know, we went from when Giles and I were on uh, webinars all day, every day through the start of 2020 to a year where neither of us felt like we did any work last year because we were so heavily involved in this fundraise to a point now where we've been back at work. He's been back at work for a month and a half. I've been back at work for three weeks. And we're kind of in that like get shit done mode again, which is quite cool. Uh, so, so it sounds like yeah, we believe that we can refocus you and kind of re rejuvenated you, but also given you that, 
that extra resource that you need in order to to make to make these new products come to life. Do we look rejuvenated? <laughs> I think Giles, we both look pretty... Giles never yeah. has never looked better. You know what, Sam? I've had your explanation. It's very technical <laughs> and uh, well done on that, Giles. Thank you. What What was he on about? Good question. That, that in fact, he used a lot more words than maybe I probably would have done. But I think, I mean, I will start with the fact that we this the process we went through was, and I won't go on about it forever, but. We, we've, we've been running Home Search for quite a while. And, you know, we had this vision of Home Search when we launched it out of another business, a bigger business, which we ran before that. Um, um, also a business that helps estate agents um, win instructions, but in a different way uh, and bigger as well. Um, and so we, we self-funded Home Search for quite a few years. And then we, we did our first major raise, our seed, seed investment raise, in um in fact the, the the month before covid kicked off so that was you know the timing was timing guys. it was good timing it was good timing and actually but we also we also took on a couple of investors who were very wise and they immediately saw it happen now i have to be honest um i i've been in business i've been running my own businesses for 17 years i can't believe it it's this month so january is 17 years uh, I, when it comes out of my mouth, I'm like, really, did that actually happen? But it's true. I have. Hardly I, I, looks old enough, right? I, I, I don't feel old enough. I sometimes, well, I typically don't act old enough most of the most times. But actually, somehow, I have been in business for 17 years on my own, and um, as in, you know, working working well with with all my teams. Um, and uh, this, the last nine months, this process that we've just gone through to get the Series A. Is the hardest nine months I've had in my entire 17 year career. And I went through the 2008 financial crisis with 55 staff and 250 grand of the costs a month. And the world collapsed in 2008. And, you know, I sort of have lived through that kind of, I've got scars in my mind of, of that process and that, that, that time. And yet the last nine months were harder than that in many ways because of the VC we chose. Now, you, you, you know, Kerfuffle know this, but um, lots of different tech companies get funded all the time. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it can be, look, I, I don't, I, nothing's, I've never found anything terribly easy. You know, money doesn't come out of nowhere. You've got to work for it. That's, that's the only thing I do know. You've got to work hard and you've got to be dedicated to what you do. But I am aware that there are funders out there that will kind of just throw money at anything. And, you know, the, the due diligence process is, well, if they like the smell of what's going on, then they'll give you the money. Yeah, uh, and, if, and, and when you read these headlines of the sort of money that is being thrown about in the space, right. yeah, it's incredible. As, as somebody that I mean, I'm I, I more more of my feet in the agent camp than I do in the, in the tech camp. But yeah. when you look at it, you'd think, wow, as long as you've got a fairly robust concept, somebody will write you a check. But that's cool. It, it is your point. I believe that's true. I believe it is true. I've never gone down that route. I mean, I raised money from angel investors and they, 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 they knew us. They knew that we deliver on our promises. They knew we work. You know what? I imagine the most reassuring thing for an investor is that when you're putting your bed, you're putting your head to sleep and you're, you're going to bed and you're thinking, is my money safe? They're thinking, you know, they got Giles and Sam working their ass off. Probably that, at that moment where they're putting their head down to bed, Giles and Sam are probably sitting there writing emails, doing this and that. So I think in terms of a safe investment, you know, we were that to the energy investors. And so they, they made a pretty quick decision on us back in 2019. Um, and so I kind of had no idea what to expect. I'd never gone through a funding process. I've only ever built businesses myself with no investment, yeah. just by sheer hard work and we've recycled whatever profits we had that month into the following month and we've been very careful what we've spent and how we've grown and we've grown responsibly and i think that is the normal way of doing business right um we're not used to just taking people's money in and spending all over the place that's just not how we've ever done it so i wasn't familiar with it anyway we then decided actually we want to get an amazing funding partner a funding partner that's going to help us grow but grow really well to for, to serve our industry and so we decided we, we, we shortlisted it down to two or three of the biggest funders in the country, the most well-respected. And we then very quickly, very quickly narrowed it down to Octopus Ventures, who were the original VC funding partner to 
uh, Zoopla. They, they yes. I think they funded them from seed level all the way down to the PLC when they floated. And um, they've since done another, I think, two or three investments with Alexander Chesterman, who ran Zoopla. And I think the fact that he went back to them was a good sign. The fact that they seeded it so early and it was so successful, you know, that's a good sign as well. Um, and actually, the more we spoke to them, the more we realized they were really um, a very uh, decent investor. You know, they're not a kind of, you know, slash and burn VC or P firm. They're not um, only fundamentally obsessed with the profitability and who cares about the clients and who cares about the damage that gets done in the meantime. They weren't like that at all. Um, and actually, that was that was really refreshing. And then they were they were really impressed by some of our kind of um, uh, well, uh, we've got ambitions for you know corporate social responsibility, and um, you know we, we've got some interesting environmental uh, factors about our business that we're looking to push. Like you know we we use wood free paper, and we, um, we we do absolutely everything we can to recycle stuff. Um, we're we're pretty good at that sort of stuff, and I think they they quite like that about us. And there were there were lots of in other benefits other than their money to them, but. That was that was the courting process, and before we knew it, we were kind of you know flirting in love with each other, and we're like they, they looked at us, and although they didn't tell us this at the beginning, they only told us this after we signed the deal. They said, in fact, they, they, in the beginning they were like playing it pretty cool, um, but as you do, as you would do, as I probably would do if I was in their in their shoes. In fact, I'm not very good at playing it cool, but I'm kind of heart on the sleeve, cards on the table. Here I am. This is what it is. Take it or leave it. Um, but they were playing it pretty cool at first. They admitted to us after the deal was signed that we were one of the fastest growing companies they'd invested in. I was like, well, you didn't bloody tell us that in the beginning, did you? Um, you know, you were playing it really cool. Like, oh, well, you know, this could be here and this could be there. We were taking it really personally. Um, and so anyway, the point was in that courting. When, when you look at it, that, that so in that courting process and when you look at the, the investment that's been made and particularly look about the space that you guys occupy within within the market anything to do with data at the moment has a buzz about it i know it's not it's not a, a sector of the market that is without its competition it absolutely is and i think it's it's fiercely contended but i i i also think it's the one area that seems to be delivering value for agents that possibly wasn't even there 10 years ago it, it will do. It, it will deliver for agents. And I think, and, and data will. I, it, it's not a sexy industry, data. I mean, uh, it, it, for, for a lot of people, they can just glaze over and get quite bored quite quickly. But in reality, it is what's changing everything. Data is changing absolutely everything. The data is what's building more aerodynamic cars, which is lowering fuel commission, you know, consumptions. Data is what's making um, our journeys more um efficient and pleasurable and and making all sorts of stuff even the stupid things like our clothes more comfortable you know the data in the background is is making human life easier uh and so yeah and in agents terms i think it, there are a number of other properties uh, property companies or data companies in the property industry right um but they're all quite different actually and one of the things that went through this period incredibly stressful and very time-consuming process of due diligence that the the vc did on us is really forensic investigation i mean forensic on another level um the the reports that they had drawn up on us i'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of pages yeah. They went, they, they took microscopes to everything, every element of our business. They looked at all of our clients. They interviewed our clients, you know, and I said, well, which clients do you want to see? Well, I want to see five of the big ones, five of the medium ones, and five of the small ones. Okay, cool. So what should I tell them? Like 10, 15 minute chat? They're like, no, it could take up to 90 minutes. Right. And they'll need to fill out this pre-qualification form. And they'll need to also provide us with a, a check on all the information we've checked. And I thought, oh man, uh, Anyway, so luckily, somehow, we got all the clients they wanted in the big, the medium, and the small. And uh, another thing they came back to us and said was, it almost felt set up. All our clients, and this is probably because Sam called not and sort of charmed them with his little Aussie accent and said, look, can you do us a little favor, you know? I won't do the Aussie accent. I can't do it very well. It'll probably come out a different one. But um, the, the, they said that our clients were so... Um, 
uh, positive and warm about not just the business that they currently do and the, 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 the ROI they've had, the return on their investment, but also the, the, their excitement about the future. And so we were like, yeah, that was cool. I, I think I think that that's fair to say. If you do, I keep my eye on what goes on on the home search group on Facebook. Don't think I'm not watching you, Hunter. I'm there all the time. Um, but I think what's really... It's lurking from in the background. <laughs> always lurking. Um, but when I'm talking to people in the industry, when I'm talking to agents, if they are a home search uh, user or they've had interaction with you, I think it's fair to say that they, they do become fans. That they're not just customers, but they do become fans. They buy into your <clears throat> wider ethos. And I think they also understand that you don't just see them as a means to an end in terms of paying the bills at the end of the month, but you're there to nurture their growth and to help them um, along their journey as well in, in terms of delivering that value. And that is, it, it's, it's incredibly clear from talking to those agents. And I'm sure that the VC um, people, when they were doing their diligence, yeah, they, they, spoke they got a flavor of it. That's what they, they came away it, with. That it was time. actually, you right i mean that they they referred to that as sort of intangible value um and that was actually what allowed giles and i to hold quite firm in in looking for what it was that we were looking for because you know everything it was literally nine months of not just due diligence but negotiation and i think we all ended up they got the business they wanted to invest in and see grow we got what we needed to see our vision through um and i'm hoping i mean we're what you know nearly two months into a partnership it's going really well so far um, I, I firmly believe that, you know, home search will be uh, more of the same, but at scale this year, if that makes sense. I don't think you can expect too many radically different things from us, but we will just be able to do more of what we need to do faster, which is quite exciting. Well, I'm and not... what, does that, that, what that means for the clients is it'll be simpler, simpler, easier, more powerful. <laughs> faster. That, that's actually... <laughs> Yeah, and faster. God, I said, that's a symptom of a business that's grown quite quickly. Our system has got heavier and fatter and fatter and fatter. And, and now we're putting it through the gym right now. So we're, li we're living in a world with, that is getting faster and faster, but it may be a market that gets slower. Um, and actually where the agents need to have tools at their disposal that will work, flex different muscles, because I think we've, um, we've all just lived through a, two years of a whirlwind market where We've not even had a chance to catch our breath. And now we're waking up to reality where there are yeah. still buyers, there are still sellers, but the work, we're no longer just throwing up boards everywhere. Um, six months ago, I could have walked out into the middle of the street and went, house for sale. And six people would have just come down and, and, and we would have been in a bidding war just there and then. But now this, this is a different reality. And I think, uh, I think that home search, uh, tools like that, but certainly the sort of stuff that you're hinting at bringing out in the next year, hopefully are going to help um, people like me to not just walk out in the middle of the street and shout home for sale, um, because I'm not sure it will have the same effect in six months time. Um, you won't need to, you won't need to. I think, you know, the, the future of it will be uh, being able to very clearly and people often and still to this day, there's a lot of people like what actually does home search do? And it's really simple. We help agents find the right home for their clients. That 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 ultimately is is a is a lovely outcome for us. We're cheerleaders for you. It, We're yeah. beating that drum. We want to see what you're going to be doing for us in the next year. I'm incredibly excited. I'm impressed by everything that you've done so far and, and where you've you've come a, a long, long way in, in the business as well. Um, and really excited to see what you'll be delivering for agents in, in the next year. Uh, I've loved our little catch up guys, but in about seven minutes, I have to be stood in somebody's living room telling them about how home search can maybe find their next home. So well, we, we won't get in the way. I feel like we've already won this game show. Um, you know, it. your, your prize might be an instruction, but I think that's the, that's the name of the game. If you look at all the, um, Sam and I did a, a an interesting piece last year where the name of the game felt more pressured. It was, you know, how many instructions can we get our hands on because we're selling everything that we can. I think you're hearing the same messages today from the market that there's still not enough instructions out there. But Sam speaks, he tells a very intelligent story because there's more to it than that. 
it's not that there aren't sellers out there. There are sellers, but those sellers need to buy something and they mm. struggle to find the right sort of thing. And all they've seen is everybody else cashing in on a crazy market. And they also have heard stories of people becoming falling off the ladder or becoming homeless as a result mm. of, of not finding the right thing, putting themselves under crazy pressure. And, and that's not really what they need to do. They're motivated, but not that motivated that they need to sort of uh, go and endanger themselves. So I think it's a it's a fast moving um, story in terms of w- what's going to happen to our market over the next year. And I, I think agents will have to work harder and smarter. And hopefully you guys are a part of that. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to catch Thank up you, with David. Thank Dan, you. Dan, we're going to let you go to bed because it looks like it might be midnight or something there in Australia. Um, 10, 10, 10 p.m. I think. Giles, I don't see enough of you, man. We need. To we're available. Let, I, I will. Yeah. I'll be honest. We've been hiding the last nine months. We had to. I was hiding under my desk for a lot of it, just doing numbers and scribbling and replying to emails. But I'm out now. We're, we're out. With that. They've let me out of the cage. I'm. I'd be delighted to join you on as many of these game show host scenes as as you want. Uh, I, I love the background. Honestly, I feel like Bob Hope is going to come out any minute now, and he's going to say something cool. But, yeah, um, I aspire to a little bit of Bob Hope and on that note I'd like to thank you to all our viewers at home have a great 2022 thank you cheers guys